Had this morning funding fiasco. The pandemic may be over, but some major school districts across the country are still spending COVID relief aid they don't have. Hundreds of billions of taxpayer dollars were given to public school districts across the country as, quote, pandemic aid. And now some of the largest school districts in some blue cities and states are still trying to spend COVID money that's long been gone and refusing to scale back. Chicago is a prime example of how this aid has led to both a financial and leadership crisis. Joining us now to discuss this and more is Parents Defending Education's Director of Outreach, Erica Sanzi. Good morning to you, Erica. A lot, to, a lot to discuss here. You know, thousands of staff were hired in Chicago public schools to the tune of $2.8 billion. Now, this was using COVID relief funds. The money's gone. Chicago Schools does not want to reduce the workforce, though, and no one has a plan to pay for this extra staff. The mayor's tried to get rid of the school district chief. The teachers union is fighting this. The entire school board resigned. What a colossal disaster going on there. Yeah. I have to say my heart does break for families with children in the Chicago public schools who have no option to go anywhere else because the level of dysfunction in this district, I mean, it's always been a very dysfunctional district, but this is really, really bad. Um, and essentially what you have is Brandon Johnson is the mayor of Chicago, but his job before that was that he was a lobbyist and an organizer for the Chicago Teachers Union. So it's basically like, that fox is now guarding the hen house mm. and he's extremely um well he's kind of a radical but he's also just extremely irresponsible so really what happened was he wanted to take on a high interest short-term loan to sort of like bridge this gap instead of laying off anybody and he the school board didn't want to do that so then he pressured the board members to fire the chief Jeez. of the schools and they didn't want to do that and that's, I think, where these resignations came from, where that the, the, the disagreement over what to do about this problem reached a boiling point and they all um, resigned. So it is a mess. And the last thing I would just say is, is again, like this was, it's one thing to make a mistake because you didn't have enough information. But in this case, they knew this was a one-time influx, influx of money and um, they irresponsibly used it um, over half of it to increase their permanent staffing. And there is a budget. You have to work within that budget. You don't get to spend as much as you want for as long as you want. But you know, Erica, this is exactly why experts warned this pandemic aid was a terrible idea because as you said, it was supposed to be for one-time funding and these school districts did not take into account this was only short-term funding. So the schools want a bailout from the city. The city wants a bailout from the state. And this is where this becomes now a problem for all of us because they're going to want a bailout from the feds. I mean, one thing that's been clear is that a lot of districts are in a bad situation because of this COVID money. They just didn't listen when they were told it is a one-time thing. Do not spend it on things like raises or permanent staffing because those costs like become, you can't reduce those easily. Um, and unfortunately, I think what happened is because the federal government is sort of known for like never pulling back, it's always like, well, once once we're funded at a certain level, exactly. they're never going to reduce us. So they thought they're not going to cut us back. But in this case, the spigot has been shut off for the COVID money. And now a lot of districts are in deep trouble financially because, again, they didn't believe what they were being told about this being a one time thing. Okay, this goes right to the government spending money they don't have. Um, a federal civil rights complaint lodged by Parents Defending Education, your organization, has actually led LA Unified School District to end a program that actually used race as a factor in determining which child would be helped. Tell us more about this and, 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 and how this complaint led to a change in the Los Angeles Unified School District. Yeah, this has become this common thing where you want to increase achievement because you see disparities, right? And, there's, and the, clearly that's an understandable thing to want to do. So they have a program called the Black Student Achievement Plan. The problem is you cannot you cannot have programs based exclusively on race, which this was. So the only students that could be included in this plan, this $120 million plan in a public school district was if they were of a certain skin color. So our um, complaint was just that you can't, this cannot be the determining factor. Find another way to identify the students that need 
help in terms of student achievement. Um, and so that's what they've had to do. And again, I would just say to viewers, one thing we've learned since, you know, since we've been doing this now for three years, a lot of people in running school districts don't seem to know that the 1964 Civil Rights Act, when it says you can't use public money and to include or exclude people based on race, they don't realize that that includes everybody, right? So you can't exclude anybody in programs um, or include them either based on their race. So again, they're gonna need to look at other things. Like for example, look at the students that are struggling the most. You're probably still gonna capture the same students that you would have captured in this plan, but now you're not breaking the law. Right. All right, Parents of Ending Education's Director of Outreach. Always great to talk to you, Erica. Thanks for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Thanks, Jen. Have a nice weekend.